Hi guys, I'm Esther, I'm a director and producer and I'm also a very passionate equestrian. Thirty six four thirty six is brought to you by the Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice. Subscribe today on YouTube. So my horse obsession started at the age of nine. I was born and raised in Germany and my classmate in fourth grade asked me to come with her one morning to uh, the riding lessons at her riding club. So that was my first experience with horses. I've never really had any riding experience before so I was quite nervous especially because they put me on the biggest horse that I saw there but then the feeling was amazing the connection that you make with the horse at that moment it was like love at first sight I knew I wanted to do this for the rest of my life and I didn't want any of the other hobbies anymore I even told my parents even though I had been doing ballet at that point for five years I said, honestly, I cannot go back to ballet and feel the same way about it. There's nothing that compares to horseback riding. And that's how everything started. And since then, I cannot stay away from horses. <laughs> like every other sport, there's always a risk, and with horses too, like the risk of falling and getting injured, which happens many times, but then you get back up and you have to keep going, or being bitten, which has happened to me before. A horse has almost bit off two of my fingers before. But, you know, you'll always come across these kind of experiences. What's life if you cannot take a risk for doing what you love to do, you know? And I mean, with horses being sweet animals, uh, they can still be unpredictable. Um, like I said, if you have ever seen their teeth, if you look at the way they bite into an apple. I mean, they don't bite into an apple. The apple will disappear. They eat that in one chunk. So that says something about their power and of how big they are. <laughs> the love of my life was an Arabian horse named Laika. She was a beautiful white horse with gray long mane and very sweet, had a bit of a temper. <laughs> um, was really fast and just a really cool horse. We were really connected. We had this special bond. I would even didn't want to go home at night and would sometimes just stay in her stable, sit there and watch her eat hay. <laughs> and we would spend so much time together. Sadly, our connection couldn't last for much longer than a couple of years because she got very sick and had to be put to sleep and I didn't even get to say bye to her. That was very devastating and discouraging and at first it caused me not to want to ride any horses anymore because I thought I could never find the same connection to a horse anymore than I had with Laika and I was angry and sad that I had lost her. And then after a few months of not riding I realized I had lost myself. I wasn't happy. I wasn't the same person without horses in my life and I decided to get back into the saddle because I'm not happy without it. For college I relocated to Arizona and it was really hard finding access to horses again and I was sad that I had left that behind in Germany where I knew so many places where I could go riding and had horses around me everywhere. And then in Arizona, I didn't know any people. I certainly didn't know people who had horses. And without a car getting around to get to even out to the countryside where there are horses was difficult. So for almost a year, I went nuts because I didn't have access to horses. I think it was eight months, which is close to a year for me, in horseback riding time anyway. You know, <laughs> I almost lost my mind in that time. But then finally, I met amazing people who allowed me to work on their ranch. They were horse breeders. So that was just like heaven. I would wake up in the morning and had horses in my backyard. I mean, that was the best time of my life. Um, but sadly, when I relocated again, 
to Los Angeles to pursue my filmmaking career, um, I had the same problem, starting from zero now, still don't have um, regular access to horses, and it's been super difficult. One of the only shortcuts that's helped me so far is I made one of my first projects in film school about horses, so I got to ride them and film them, so I got to combine two of my passions. <laughs> I believe that in order to find one of the most essential parts of happiness, one must find that one hobby that completes them. I was very happy to realize that I have found this hobby. For me, it's horseback riding. It makes me happier than anything in the world. So even though horseback riding is a sport, I never do it for the competition. I've tried it um, as a teenager and I didn't like it. It didn't feel right. I do it for the enjoyment of my heart only and for the connection with the horse. Um, and ultimately, I do want to own my own ranch and I want to help uh, disabled children and adults in therapeutic riding because research has shown how much it can improve uh, people's conditions. And I've helped with horseback riding lessons back in the day for those type of disabilities and it's always been such a good result. Ultimately, I don't only look forward to working with horses, I also am excited about just showing people the love and excitement I have for horses and teaching them about my knowledge and exposing them to the equestrian culture, which is such a great environment and you'll always have a great time around horses. I've never met anyone who didn't like it. <laughs> My first appearance on the Late Night Experiment was in season four, which was really fun because I got to play a uh, news anchor and I had to fight with my co-hosts and say we had to say mean things to each other, which was super fun. <laughs> and it was great because we were all doing what we love, working on this project, and I got to work with great people and it was really fun times. I would do it any day again. <laughs> I hope they throw the Encyclopedia Britannica at him. Wait a second. Motown Maurice deserves the right to a fair trial. It's called the Sixth Amendment, but you wouldn't know about that. His charges are still unclear, and the court date hasn't even been set yet. So until then, show the man some respect. You guys should really watch the Late Night Experiment, because especially if you live in LA and you're part of the whole media industry, it's a really great resemblance of how hard it is to get started in the industry and how many burdens there are and everything that comes with it and it displays it in a comedic way because there are so many hardships in life but we must approach them with humor and this uh, is just a great way to showcase that so you guys will enjoy the late night experiment if you are aware of these issues just watch it The Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice is a story about a relentless crusader determined to achieve his destiny as a nationally syndicated late night talk show host. Subscribe and explore his odyssey today.